Welcome back, casual gardeners. This video has been actually about four, maybe five weeks in the making, and that is because I got really impatient and decided to sow the seeds for this experiment in January, which is, even in a greenhouse, in my climate, not a good idea. Today is January 28th. The soil at Home Depot is frozen. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to thaw. This video is all about an experiment to test whether electroculture actually makes my plants grow faster. This is part one of a two-part series. I'm going to talk about what I did to set up the experiment and why. You're going to want to make sure that you are subscribed to my channel so that when we get to part two, you're going to get notified so you can actually see how it all turns out. Whenever you try something new in your garden, I believe it's a really good idea to do kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. So do, do it your old way alongside your new way. And the reason I like this idea is because conditions in your garden are going to change from season to season and from year to year. And if you just go all in on a new method in your garden, there's really not going to be any way to know if it actually worked any better. Most of the time, that simple side-by-side -side comparison and seeing if, you know, you, you have a gut feeling that something worked better or not is going to be enough. But I'm a super geeky guy. I'm wearing my Space Dynamics Laboratory shirt. So I've gone all out and, and done a whole full-scale experiment. For my experimental grow bags, I decided to go with um, three varieties of lettuce. I'm going to be doing Black Seeded Simpson. Merlot and Burgundy Delight. This should get me some good color because I am going to be harvesting and eating this. I'm not throwing it away just because I'm doing it for science. Heck no. And my big goal is just going to be to make sure that I have the same amount of each type of lettuce in both the experimental and the control bags. I'm just going to smooth it out and let's do one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine little divots where I'm going to put my seeds. I'm going to drop a few seeds in each of my little divots because I want to make sure I have at least one that comes up in each spot. I want to leave the divots here until I have placed everything because I'm going to be jamming copper coils in here. And I don't want to impale a planting hole. Oh, not enough to do. I've only got eight, so I'm just going to do two in that one. Three in that one. Three in that one. So I'm going to go over to the other side of these 10 grow bags and plant the non-copper coil grow bags. And the reason I want to separate them a little bit is because I want to control for the variable. What if there is something at work with electroculture and it kind of spills over into the neighboring grow bags? I want to eliminate that possibility in my controls. Now, as an experiment, this has several parts that we're going to want to talk about. It has the hypothesis, independent, dependent, and controlled variables, and it's got some way of determining whether or not the results of the experiment mean anything. A hypothesis is a positive claim that can be tested experimentally. So in the case of this experiment, the hypothesis is electroculture will make my lettuce grow better. And anytime you have a hypothesis, you also have a null hypothesis. The null hypothesis for this experiment is electroculture will not make my lettuce grow better. And the whole point of this experiment is to test and see whether the hypothesis or the null of the hypothesis is what turns out to be true. Whenever a scientist is doing an experiment, in order to avoid bias, they always try to favor the null hypothesis. Unless you get like a significant improvement from whatever new method you're testing, 
it's safe to assume that the method didn't do anything. If I only got like very slightly more lettuce, I might do a statistical test to see if the slightly more lettuce that I got from my electroculture condition is actually statistically different from the variation from harvest to harvest that's just happening normally. So I'd want to see if that difference is really different. If, if I didn't see any difference that was different, I would reject my hypothesis, I would accept the null hypothesis, and I would say that electroculture did not make my lettuce grow better. I, I'm just going to grow them like, you know, lettuce until they're ready to start harvesting. I'm going to use the picking hole leaf method that I talk about in my video, my big giant video on lettuce that you must watch. And I'm going to just harvest all the lettuce from each set. I'm going to keep the lettuces separate and I'm going to record their weight. I'm just going to go through and as I harvest each week until they bolt, I'm going to weigh and graph my lettuce harvests. And that should give us a really good idea of the average harvest at the end of it. I'll have a beautiful graph to show you and we can say, okay, did this or did this not make a difference having these copper foils in the soils? Now the independent variable is the variable that you are changing on purpose. So in this case, in the case of this experiment, the independent variable would be that I'm adding copper coils to some of my grow bags, but not all of my grow bags. And in every experiment, your independent variable is going to be accompanied by a dependent variable. That's what you expect to be changed as a result of what you're fiddling with on purpose. So for this experiment, the, in, the dependent variable is going to be amount of lettuce growth. So we're assuming that adding the copper coils will result in a difference in lettuce growth. Now there are a lot of other things that can vary between the experimental and the control groups, like how much light do the grow bags get? If I didn't position them very carefully and check on my positioning, I might have accidentally put some in the shade and some are getting more light, or how much water I give them or how much I allow them to dry out between waterings. How fertile is the soil? If it's not all the same fertility, that could change my results. So these are all variables that could change, but we try not to let them change. We try to keep it all the same. So those are our controlled variables. Because I really want, as much as possible, for the only thing that's different to be whether or not there are copper coils. It is absolutely impossible to completely keep everything under control, so it's samey samey, especially on, on my budget. But the more you can keep them the same, the better you can have confidence in the results that you get from your experiment. Today's date is February 11th. It is 25 degrees Fahrenheit outside and 68 degrees Fahrenheit inside right now. It's not quite noon yet, but I wanted to direct your attention to this lettuce that has come up. The experiment is now officially underway. In the electroculture lettuce, you can see I've got a few more starts. For this experiment, more lettuce needs to be quantified. Like, am I going to lay my lettuce leaves end to end and take a tape measure? And No, of course not. I don't have the patience for that. So what I'll be doing in this experiment is I'll be taking weight measurements with every harvest. And I'll show you the specifics of that in part two. You can actually see me weighing them out. I can't weigh them right now because there's nothing to weigh yet. I mean, okay, I've got little teeny leaves, but I can't harvest them yet. So when we get to video part two, you'll see how the weighing works. There could be other things that cause change differences in my results that haven't been accounted for. And we call those things confounds. Maybe I don't completely understand the phenomenon I'm testing, and that would actually be correct because the ex explanations of 
how electroculture works are so inconsistent with all of the known science that, that I do know that, yeah, it's really easy to say that this experiment is confounded because I don't actually understand what I'm testing. Or there could be a third force in addition to my independent and dependent variables that is changing stuff that hasn't been accounted for. I have thought about some possible confounds that go with this experiment. Like um, I'm working in grow bags right now because I want to be able to move all this out of the way and build long-term greenhouse furniture. And so I'm in grow bags. And what that means is that my soil is separate from the ground. So one possible compound is that electroculture needs to actually pass down into the earth to work. I don't know. So that's a thing that could go wrong. Another thing that could go wrong is that my frame of my greenhouse is made of aluminum. And aluminum is a conductive metal, which means that if electroculture really is working with electromagnetic fields, then the frame of my greenhouse, depending on the wavelength of, you know, whatever the electroculture force is, could either be acting as an antenna and influencing everything's growth that's in here, or it could be acting as a sort of electroculture Faraday cage and shielding everything in the greenhouse from the benefits of electroculture. So that would be a really big confound. Now that's not a full list of possible confounds. If you can think of other confounds, I think it would be really helpful if you popped those down in the comments. Because thinking of confounds is actually kind of a fun game. The date is February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. And I'm just giving you a little bit of a look at the progress here in my greenhouse. You'll notice that I did install yellow sticky traps in all of my soil bags. And that isn't because I currently have white fly or another pest. It's to keep that from becoming a problem. I've got really good germination in this bag. Nothing's germinating in this one closer to the wall yet, which doesn't shock me. It's colder there. There are a lot of claims about electroculture, and this experiment, this particular experiment that we're doing, is not actually set up to test any single claim. Like some people say that electroculture is going to improve the cold hardiness of plants by some unspecified mechanism. This could test that because the temperature in my greenhouse does still drop into the mid-20s Fahrenheit at night sometimes, but that's not the only thing that's going on, right? So we can't test that by itself. And there are some claims that electroculture reduces or eliminates the need for fertilizer or improves nutrient uptake through the roots, and that's how you get the improved growth of the plants. And of course, this experiment isn't set up to test that either. All we're looking at is, will my lettuce be more with the copper coils or not? I would love it if you let me know in the comments, what is your opinion on electroculture? Do you use electroculture? Have you tried a side-by-side -side comparison on your own of not electroculture versus electroculture? As you watch this video and you see what my experimental design is, can you think of any problems that I haven't addressed with it? And regardless of, of how this experiment turns out, I'm actually just really excited that I'm already growing some things and it's February, and I'm really excited to enjoy some fresh lettuce. Whether or not I get more from the electroculture bed, oh my gosh. Fresh lettuce is so much better than what you buy at the grocery store, and I am on my way to it. Now, lettuce isn't the only thing that I'm growing in my greenhouse right now. Be sure to check out the other video that I'm making at the same time, because this is all growing at the same time, to see what else I have started in my greenhouse in these grow bags. If you like this video, make sure you hit like. Uh, make sure you're subscribed if you want to see how this experiment turns out. And finally, thank you for joining me here in my garden today. I hope you have a wonderful time in your own.